G'day everybody, Nick Dinger here again for another VB.net tutorial. This time around, we are looking at XAML once again, following on from the last video. So, last video we looked at XAML, we looked, talked about the basics, and I showed you how to use it, and I've made a really, really dodgy program with it. So in this video, I want to go beyond that, I want to make a better program, sort of a, just the interface for a calculator, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the grid control, okay? He's really powerful. I've started using him lots, so we're just going to start there. So let's create a new project. I'm going to call him XAML Calculator. Fucking spell. Calculator. That's better. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to swap my views. Okay, I am going to hide my design, and I'm going to zoom on in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. By default, the grid control is always there. Now, in the last video, I talked about the stack panel. As you probably see, he just stacks things in rows, okay? So here's a vertical sort of aligned control, and you don't have a lot of control over if you can put things to the left and the right. You can, but it's a lot fiddly, and you're better off using the grid object, okay? So imagine splitting things into columns and into rows, because that's what the grid object really does for you. And what you have to do before you start adding controls to your program you have to specify how many columns and how many rows you want and it's also beneficial because it allows us to sort of control um, how big these rows and columns are what they look like and how things look like inside them without changing each individual control I'm just hiding them so you can see more of my XAML code in the grid what I'm going to do is I'm first of all going to set it up so we can see grid lines so I'm going to type in show and you see it's already highlighted this in the autocomplete box. I'm going to press the space bar to type it in. And you can see I've got two choices. It's a Boolean, so true or false. So I'm going to highlight true, and I'm going to press space again. And it's going to fill it in, and I'm ready to do my next attribute for my grid object. The next thing I'm going to do is set the vertical alignment to the top. I'm going to set the horizontal alignment to stretch. And what that's going to do is it's going to force the grid control to take up the entire width of my form. That said, I'm going to change the width of the form to 250 just because I don't want that much space to work with. The calculator is generally pretty slim and pretty long, okay, just like a traditional one. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a margin around my grid. So there's going to be a little bit of white space at the top, the left and the right, and the bottom of my object just because I think it looks a little bit nicer when you've got some space around your control. Okay. With all that done, this is what our form looks like. Nothing special. It's a bit skinnier. The grid object is set up pretty much ready to go. You go away. I just accidentally did that by clicking on the grid. We're going to do that manually. All right. This time around, this is going to be an explicit definition. And what the explicit definition is, is these, pro or these attributes, I should say, up here, we can actually specify using a long explicit method. This is actually a short method. The explicit method would be to type in grid dot show grid lines and then to put the value not you true inside that okay it's whinging because I've already set it up here okay so that is actually the equivalent to me typing it up here this is an explicit attribute all right I'm gonna undo all that because I don't need it because it's already done for me but I need to use the explicit attribute this time around for what's called our column definitions. And what we have to do in here is to find how many columns we're going to have inside of our program, okay? And this is called a property collection, all right? Because we can actually specify as many columns as we want. And the way we define our columns is by using a column definition, okay? And in this column definition, I can specify if the first column, how wide it is, what color it is, what alignment it is, things like that. I don't want to specify any of those things. Okay, I want them by default. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this tag off on the exact same line. Okay, what that basically is, that's an open and a close tag all in one. And it saves me closing it off on the right hand side here. Anyway, I want three columns. This is specifying just one. So I want to see this three times. I'm going to use the quick copy and paste technique by clicking on the end of the line, control C, control V twice. Done. So this is my columns for this grid. I want three of them. Now we need to specify our rows, as you can probably understand. The row definitions, 
Okay, we want five of these bad boys because the top one's going to be the text box. The next four are going to be allocated for our buttons. So I'm going to go row definition just like we did before, but I'm going to change one attribute for each of the rows, the height of them. We're going to actually specify how high they are. By default, what these rows would do is stretch to how big the controls are. But what I want to do is I want the rows to tell the controls how big they're going to be. So what I mean by that is if I go height equals 30, whoops, didn't mean to press tab, I'm saying the first row is going to be 30 pixels high. All right. And any control that goes inside the first row is going to automatically be stretched to be 30 pixels or shrunk to be 30 pixels if you want to be very specific. All right, let's copy and paste this four more times. One, two, three, four. And the buttons are going to be 60 pixels high. So what I've now specified is three columns and five rows inside my grid. And now I have to start filling it with controls. Now you do not specify your controls down here because what that would happen then is your controls would start appearing outside your grid. And we just set up the grid to accept that control. So you want to do it about here inside your grid. First control, text box. Okay. What we're going to do is specify which column and which row he appears in. So to do that, you type in grid dot row and you put equals and then you put the number of the row that he wants to appear in. If I want him to appear in the first row, which I do, you type in zero. So it's a zero based index. Okay, if you know your arrays, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But just remember this, the first row is zero, the second row is one, two, three, four, and same for the columns, it's zero, one, two. So same thing for the grid column, he's going to be zero. Now, if I quickly close this off, just like so, I'll put a zero inside my tags, and that's going to put a zero inside my text box. Go to design, you'll see there's my text box, he appears in the top left hand cell of our grids and rows. I want that text box to cover all three of these columns. So what you do there is you change a property grid dot column span equals three. And that's going to specify three columns across. I'm going to actually quickly add a few more attributes here because firstly text appears on the right on a calculator and on the left. And then finally the zero was pretty small so I'm going to increase the font size to 18. Okay sorry that it's going off the screen. If you need to copy that down please pause the video. For right now, I'm going to start adding in the buttons. But I should probably look at what it's done. There's my text box. It covers the first three columns just there. Okay. Now, the first button that we're going to do is going to be the top left-hand corner one. If you want to have a look at what number it's going to be, look at your numpad. Okay, if you don't have a numpad, poor person, go get one. It's a seven. So what we do there is I'm going to create a button. The row he's going to appear in is the second row, so one. The first column though, so it's still zero. There's going to be no column span because I just want him to take up one box. So what I'm going to do is just put the number seven in the content for that button. Having a look at the design quickly, he appears in the top left hand, well, sort of the top left hand cell. All right, let's copy and paste twice because this is going to be the eight button. That's going to be the nine button. However, we need to change the columns to one and two. So that's the first column, the second column, and the third column. And there they are. They're appearing quite nicely. Now, before I copy and paste all these buttons and get them all done, I want to create a little bit of spacing because right now, whoops, why am I clicking on those? Right now, everything is sort of jammed together. Everything is touching one another. Don't ignore the grid lines, okay? I just did it to show you the columns and the rows. They're all touching each other. I don't like it, okay? What I'm going to do now is adding a quick little margin for every single control. Just two. There's probably easier ways to do this, but if we do it now, we don't have to worry about it later. Let's add in here. Excuse me. You can see everything's got a nice little space around it now. Okay, it's a little bit spaced out. All right, time to copy these buttons and change the rows they appear on. So one, two, so this is gonna be four, five, and six. This is gonna be one, two and three columns, so four, five, six, one, two, three, and then we need the zero button, 
He's going to appear in row number four in the zeroth column. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make him span two columns. All right, and you'll see why in a second. And then we change that to zero. Okay, check him out. Doesn't look too bad. Except for the grid lines suck, so let's turn those grid lines off. Whoops. Grid lines false. There we go. There's our good old calculator. So I'd probably put the decimal place just there. I'd start adding another column for all of our operations. I'd add in equals buttons down the bottom. All that kind of stuff. But really, I think you get the point. I hope you get the point, I should say. And that's a good introduction to the grid control and how to start using it. Learn to love him because he is incredibly powerful in the way that he works. That's it for today, everybody. Can you like, subscribe, and comment down the bottom? I'd love to hear from you. If you have any requests, please put them in. I'm, I'm always happy to do requests. But for the moment, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Bye-bye for now.